So siblings could come and go. So somebody may have been born as an only child um, and be an only child for quite a long time, and then another step sibling or another <coughs> child who represent who was represented or you know was seen as a sibling would come along. Um, in relation to, to Wendy's question, um, I mean, I, I pick up a lot on what Wendy Holway said, but I was also, I think in my work, I'm really keen to keep the identity and identities together. I don't think it's, I really don't think it's the fluffy bunny approach because it, it presents you with a real challenge. How do you keep in mind, empirically and theoretically, um, the macro and the micro and how do, you, how do you kind of develop a, a theoretical framework that allows you to, to move between, between those two spheres, really, and always keep them connected? One, one thing that I think is really important to think about is the, um, you know, because I take a psychosocial perspective, I would emphasise the place of the unconscious. Working in education, I've done a lot of educational research, um, and it's really clear that... Uh, you know, the structures of the mind are, are all over the place in education, in these physical and, and political policy-driven uh, and all kinds of other ways driven um, institutions. And that despite really powerfully, consciously held desires for change at both governmental level and a personal level and a community level, uh, you know, the unconscious just scuppers that all the time. It scuppers it all the time in the classroom. And that's where the dynamics of class and race and location and inequality really are most powerfully felt when, you know, you've got kids who really, really want to do well and they just can't do it. It's not because they haven't got the ability, but there's something else going on. That ha so that at that point, we have to go back to the big structures um, yeah, I'll leave that there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I know everyone wants to go, so I will not be long. But I think I'd just like to kind of respond to all three questions, which, including yours, Jeff, about culture, all in a kind of nutshell. So I hope I can do that. <laughs> I think carrying on from what, what the issues that Kath raised and, and what Helen said, and I think, you know, I hope you don't think this is... Um, <laughs> Uh, a compromise, Wendy, but also I think, you know, you have to carry on working with, with identity and identities. I think if you kind of write in, politi uh, write in politics, the social, um, race and ethnicity into those discussions around what does identity mean, what are identity formations, identification, you can't escape talking about identity and then identities. And certainly, um, you know, from work on the rural, one of the concerns <laughs> has been about, you know, a dominant identity and a hegemonic identity of, of, of rural, of a rural population has one that's been troubling and has meant that there's been a crowding out and in a marginalisation of other identities, an exclusion of those other identities, or a subordination of those identities. So I think once you write politics in, in into those kind of um, arenas of, of social inequality, then you are always talking about identity and identities. And I think you know Jeff's point about culture is certainly one that you can um, connect to studies of the rural, because I think the rural has been a kind of cultural theatre of production of a, of a national identity, of a kind of a fantasy of a national identity. And um, so the cultural lens is always kind of crucial to work around kind of identity theory. And I think in talking about um, the rural as a kind of arena of, of, of cultural production of identity, you're also talking about kind of the spatialization of identity and how spatial relations um, are enacted within kind of identity um, criteria. So I think, for me, um, space, spaces and spatiality are always kind of integral to understanding kind of identity formations, whether they're dominant or subordinated. Thank you. We, we have gone over time, but I hope you found that really interesting and exciting. I think a lot of consequential issues have come up. We've got one really important piece of business still to enact in the evening, which is at five o'clock, Engin Eisen's lecture, which will be back in here. But now we'd like to invite you to have a cup of tea and several biscuits. <laughs> and um, before that, I'd like to thank the panel very much, to thank the people who are watching on the web, 
who've asked no questions, um, and to thank you very much for coming and attending, and also to thank Jenny and Gwyn for uh, being the roving mics for us. So thank you very much. <laughs>